Ladies and gentlemen, Forensic Frenzy would like to welcome you back for part two of Idaho 4, Secret Messages Hidden Within the Warrants. Before we continue on, let's take a moment to remember the lives of Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, and Ethan. Ladies and gentlemen, if you scroll through this video, all you'll see here today are documents you've already seen. That's not the point here. In the previous video, we discussed and revealed hidden warrant number one. In today's video, we will discuss bonus documents that we revealed in part one. Furthermore, we will discuss what law enforcement was doing around the time of the bonus documents, as well as what law enforcement told us, the public, around the time of those bonus documents. Looking at the December 1st document, I believe that the document seals the two AT&T telephone numbers that were on the tower dump. Additionally, in the December 1st press release, law enforcement makes us aware, this is the second bullet down, that DNA testing and analysis has been completed, additional tests need to be done, and that those results will not be released. At this point, we now have this document from November 16th, miscellaneous, to couple with the fact that on December 1st, the DNA results and analysis are returning. They need further analysis. And the same day, we are sealing a warrant for what appears to be one or both of those AT&T telephone numbers. Now, the very next day on December 2nd, we seal what would appear to be one to three Verizon telephone numbers. However, on our Verizon warrant, we only have two Verizon telephone numbers. One would appear to belong to Ethan. Who are the other two people? And why did one of them never make it to the warrant information? Folks, we know about two subscribers, but there were really three. The same day that we seal the Verizon phone number or numbers, we are comfortable enough, as you can see from bullet one, to hire a private security company to look over the residence. On December 3rd, the very next day, law enforcement informs the public that they are still unable to confirm the theories about Kaylee Gonzalez having a stalker. The very next day, December 4th, there is no update. At this point, the first few days of December have apparently been very productive for law enforcement. And something seems to have changed between December 3rd and December 4th, because on December 5th, we are made aware in this press release that law enforcement was able to make contact with two men who followed Kaylee around at a local business. They also make us aware that this may have been the stalker reference that she made to friends and family. The story had it, the two men were trying to pick up women at the local business. One of them followed Kaylee throughout the store and as she walked toward her car, however, he turned and walked away, never making any contact with her. Law enforcement also told us that they were able to corroborate that through additional investigation. That leads me to believe that they were able to find video from the store. Additionally, on December 5th, we put in a warrant for United Parcel Service, UPS, requesting delivery truck video. However, we weren't just requesting video. In fact, we were requesting any and all video that was recorded and stored on any delivery trucks that were in Moscow between the dates of November 6th and November 14th, 2022. However, on December 5th, we also sealed hidden warrant number two. So recapping December 5th, 
We find out about the two men at the local business who followed Kaylee around. Additionally, law enforcement puts in a search warrant for UPS asking for any and all truck video from in Moscow at all between November 6th and November 14th. And then we also have this hidden warrant sealed. The very next day on December 6th, law enforcement served a warrant to DoorDash looking for information about any sales, deliveries, purchases, and or transactions made to 1122 King Road from January 1st of 2022 through December 6th of 2022. Date and time of sale, date and time of delivery, purchases and or transactions, name and identification of driver, a full description of vehicle used, any and all communication between driver and purchaser is what was sought after. And the very same day on December 6th, law enforcement becomes comfortable enough to announce that the morning of December 7th will be move out day for the belongings of the victims as well as the surviving roommates. The very next morning on December 7th, the DoorDash warrant is returned and law enforcement makes the public aware of the white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra with an unknown plate. And the next day, on December 8th, the cavalry, which included the cowboy, arrive in two vehicles, one with a plate from Washington and one with a plate from Idaho. And they re-examine things in apparently two rooms at 1122 King Road. Fast forward a few days, and we receive an update from Chief Fry that they have re-interviewed some of the folks that were already interviewed. Which takes me back to the two men at the local business. As you can see, December 1st through December 12th, things really picked up for law enforcement, just when we all thought that they had nothing. As always, our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims, Kaylee Gonsalves, Ethan Chapin, Zanna Kernodal, and Madison Mogan. May your true justice be served. Be on the lookout for Idaho 4, Secret Messages Hidden Within the Warrants, Part 3, where we'll discuss hidden documents number 3 and 4, their relevance, to the prior documents and how these documents potentially point to our defendant having a co-defendant as well. As always guys, like, share amongst your friends and favorite creators and subscribe.